Patrick is one of the strongest men on the planet with multiple world records, including the front hold, the keg lift, and the log lift. How could one of the world's strongest men be so powerful, eating only plants? No meat, no milk, no eggs. Most of the training I do at home because it's just more practical. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? I stopped eating meat in 2005. Up to that time, I was 105 kilo, and now I'm 130 kilos. Also, at the same time, I set like four world records. So when I stopped eating meat, I got stronger and bigger. Okay, so I just go under here. Okay, yeah. Really take care of your, your back should really be straight. Get up. Get up. Dude! Oh, at 700 pounds, okay, I could not move the yoke at all. It didn't move. It felt like it was bolted to the ground. <laughs> and that was just his warm up weight. It's hard to fathom how strong Patrick really is. It's almost superhuman. When I met Patrick, he was training to break the world record for the heaviest weight ever carried by a human being. To break that record, Patrick would have to carry 1,224 pounds. That's the weight of a horse, a distance of 33 feet. The thing with the yoke is, if you really, really go insane with the weight, when you do a step and all the weight is on one leg, it sometimes feels like your bones could just break. It's probably one of the most terrifying things that we do at Strongman events. There was another guy my dad's age who had also made a big change. I ate a lot of meat. I ate my 10, 15 eggs a day. And, uh, you know, I had my 250 grams of protein a day because I weighed 250 pounds. One and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. But as I got older and as I started reading up on it, I recognized the fact that you really don't have to get your protein from meat or from animals, as far as that goes. So we start going more in the direction of the vegetarian kind of a diet. Now we're doing it the right way with the right spices. All of a sudden, I love it much more than the meat. And, uh, you know, the cholesterol went down to around 109. It was the lowest that it ever was in my entire life, at almost 69. There is no one that can relate to that better than I do because I've lived in that world. Steak is for man. Go meat! They showed us commercials, burgers, George Foreman with the grill. Yeah and the big sandwiches and all that stuff. Eat like a man and be full like a man. This is great, great marketing by the meat industry. Serious man food. Selling that idea that real men eat meat. You look like more of a man with a quarter pounder in your hand. But you got to understand that's marketing. That's not based on reality. Lewis gets it and it's a new world record as well. I changed my diet to a vegan diet and I set all of my personal best at 30 years old. The oldest man ever to win a world or Olympic medal. And there were current Olympians too. Morgan Mitchell is the two-time Australian 400 meter champion. Here comes Morgan Mitchell. Jamie, this is very, very fast. It's tough, the 400, I won't lie. The first 200 is pure speed. And then the last 200, it shows who's got that speed endurance training in their legs. And obviously the last 50, you've just got to pray because lactic is hitting hard. You need to be able to hold that endurance. She also represented Australia at the 2016 Summer Olympics. A lot of people had doubted me when I first became vegan, but my energy levels increased incredibly. And my iron, my B12, everything that people said would become deficient were amazing. I thought, I'm going to make sure I'm beating them all on the track. 
I mean, we're all friends, but it was pretty cool to finish my Australian domestic season undefeated. And to win the Nationals was obviously that little cherry on top. Morgan Mitchell, she's tearing away from the field. There was also Dotsie Bausch, an eight-time USA national cycling champion and two-time Pan American gold medalist. My event in track cycling requires a massive amount of explosive power. Go. Let's go, ladies. Go, go, go. First of all, we have to get off the line and we're starting from a dead start with one gear. We have to be able to move that mass, that weight off the line and get it up to speed within three quarters of the length of the track. My training regimen involved six days a week climbing mountains up and down for at least four and five hours a day, hard track sessions, and then big gym sessions. I grew up in Kentucky, so that's the land of casseroles and barbecue and meat. So when I transitioned over to an entirely plant-based diet, I wasn't sure if I was gonna survive. And I actually became like a machine. I got up from being able to move about 300 pounds on the inverted leg sled to moving 585 pounds, 60 reps, times five sets. To move that kind of weight, you need more than just energy. You also need strength. In other words, protein. I just couldn't believe that Dotsu, or anyone for that matter, could get enough protein eating only plants. I think one of the biggest misconceptions in sports nutrition is that we have to have animal protein, and in particular meat, to get big and strong and perform at a high level. That's just clearly not true. All that protein that you get when you eat a steak or a hamburger, where did it come from? It came from the plants that the cow ate. I was surprised to learn that all protein originates in plants. Cows, pigs, and chickens, it turns out, are just the middlemen. In fact, the largest study to compare the nutrient intake of meat eaters with plant eaters showed that the average plant eater not only gets enough protein, but 70% more than they need. Even meat eaters like me get roughly half of their protein from plants. But athletes need more protein than most people do. So I crunched the numbers from the study and realized that based on the amount of calories I was eating, I'd still be getting more than enough protein to build and maintain muscle. For example, one cup of cooked lentils or a peanut butter sandwich has about as much protein as three ounces of beef or three large eggs. But what about the quality of the protein? I'd always heard that plant-based protein was inferior. Proteins are strings of amino acids, and there are some amino acids our bodies can't make. Those are the essential amino acids. So we have to get them from food. And one of the arguments about animal-based proteins being superior is that plant-based proteins aren't complete, so you're not gonna get all the amino acids. And that's a fallacy as well. Again, I was surprised to discover that every single plant contains all the essential amino acids in varying proportions. Advanced technologies, like those used to analyze the gladiator bones, have allowed scientists to take a closer look at the tools, bones, and teeth of our ancestors, leading to the discovery that early humans ate mostly plants. And the reason for this is actually quite simple. Humans do not have any specialized genetic anatomical or physiological adaptations to meat consumption. By contrast, we have many adaptations to plant consumption. We have longer digestive tracts than do carnivores, and this allows humans to digest plants and fibers that require longer processing time. We also lack the ability to produce our own vitamin C. Vitamin C is found in plants, so the fact that we cannot make our own indicates just how reliant upon plants we actually are. This is why we have trichromatic vision. This is very different from carnivores, which have dichromatic vision. We can see more colors, and this is very important, especially if you need to find fresh, ripe fruit. We have a brain that just is desperate for glucose. It's a, I mean, it's such a fussy organ. That's the only thing it really takes in for energy. Well, meat's not a very good source of glucose. To have a big brain like this, you need to eat something different. And the most efficient way to get glucose is to eat carbohydrates. But what about our teeth? Aren't they proof that we're built to eat meat? In primates, you might think canine teeth are associated with a diet of meat, but they're not. In gorillas, when males want to intimidate other males, they will show the length of their formidable canines. 
On the other hand, carnivores have distinctive teeth and they're shaped like scissor blades. They simply shred the meat off and they swallow. Compare that to the teeth of a human being, square and low cusp for crushing and grinding tough plant tissues. Right there in your own mouth is the best evidence we have for a diet that could not have been meat.